well, I'm, I'm very excited to be introducing um, the partnership between Sunlam and the Lowry's 2020. Um, we've been looking forward to this opportunity where we find parallels between what we call creative excellence and financial excellence. And we think there are a lot of similarities. If you think about the smart planning that goes into um, churning out fantastic creative output uh, along the lines of what it takes to build true financial resilience. Uh, we believe that it puts us in a very opportune position as a brand to be able to make a meaningful difference to people's lives. We have a business uh, that is rooted on a purpose of empowering generations to be financially secure, confident and prosperous. And we think using the catalysts and conduits of creative excellence uh, to be able to help people uh, to have a much better relationship with money um, could be the sweet spot uh, to really helping the creative community, but the world at large to be able to view money, to be able to view their ability to have the betterment of life uh, in a very different way. Well, it is to be said that we are the biggest and non-banking financial services institution on the continent. And our strategy is rooted on this very powerful pillar of building a Pan-African champion. And in this continent, we truly want to help people become better in their own personal lives, but also in their ability to help others to participate in the mainstream economy. And we call this financial inclusion. What is even more exciting for us is the Lori's 2020 theme, which is hashtag create change. We think in a year that's been so devastating, in a year that's ushered so much economic turbulence, in a year that's ushered so many social ills, we think as the creative community, we have the ability to deliver tangible results that can change people's lives, not only financially, but only in their day-to-day -day lives. My name is Sidney Mbele. I'm the Chief Executive of Brand at Sanlam, and I'm very happy to be presenting this partnership between Sanlam and the Lorries 2020. Hi guys and welcome to Louis Creative Week. My name is Nicolette Machine. I'm really excited to be here with you today because we know that great ideas come from a great plan and so should your future. Now, for a lot of you who might not know who Nicolette is, I am the founder of Financial Fitness Bunnies. I actually started off a couple of years ago into the consumer financial education space simply because I had to admit to myself that I did not understand and finances. And I think for a lot of people, it is a difficult conversation to have with yourself. In fact, Hulisani Ravele, who used to be our beloved UTV presenter, she's currently now on 947. One of the things that she always says is that self-work is a very ugly work because it's difficult work. And for me, I always extend it even further. And I speak about how difficult, um, when you look at financial work, how difficult it actually is. But of course, San Lam is here to try and make it a little bit easier for yourself. And we're going to get into what spaces San Lam can play into your life in terms of how do you make sure that you plan for your future. Now, I am probably um, speaking or preaching to the choir if I talk about the importance of planning. Um, being somebody that also has worked in the creative space at some point in my life, um, I must say, though, I'm very, very grateful that um, I'm actually here speaking at a Lurie's um, um, event because I'm just like, when was I ever going to reach here? How many of us dream about that? As you, you know, every single time you are in a meeting with client, they say, we want a Lurie worthy creative idea or we want a Lurie worthy campaign. So um, I'm glad that I found um, another way to actually be here. So. As I said, my name is Nicolette Mashile. 
I am also known as the financial bunny and purely because I do consumer financial education in South Africa. Now, there's a huge difference, by the way, between consumer financial education and financial advice. And I want to have a clear distinction when it comes to that. So my partners at Sunlump, they do the financial advice, they do the financial well-being and the financial education. Whereas Nicolette Mashile will do the consumer financial education and um, kind of giving an added value to what a financial institution like a Sun Lama does. Why am I passionate about financial education? Well, I figured because at the end of the day, what you don't know, you really just don't know. But when you do know, you start to make it, you start to make better decisions, if I may call it that. And one of my biggest mantras in life is that if you know better, you do better. And when you do better, life is a little bit easier. And I guess even for a financial institution as big as Sunlam, one of the biggest things that you've got to remember is that they want sustainable clients. So if you're going to go into the journey of financial planning, or making sure that your finances are in the right space for it to actually catalyst you into a financially um, managed and a financially well future. You need to make sure that you keep up with the plan that your financial advisor would put in front of you. And that is why the financial education part of it is very important. So I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into the space. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I thought I was Miss Cool, I was actually working in an advertising agency and I was lucky to be working in one that was very tiny with a very big client and um, we had ample opportunities to be able to make money. Um, so I was making quite a substantial amount of money and I decided I am now ready to go purchase a house. So I walked into this house. Um, I, well, of course, I... I, I first uh, made contact with the real estate agent, walked into this house. Guys, you will not believe how amazing this house was. So by the way, just to give you a bit of a background, I am from Bushbuck Ridge. Now, the closest cinema to where I am is probably a good 100 meters, 100 uh, uh, meters from where we live. So it's, it's not, it's, Bushbuck Ridge is not a place where a lot of things are easily or readily accessible, right? So growing up in Bushbuck Ridge, you can suspect that one of the things I probably do not know very well was a walk-in fridge. It's a house that has a pajama lounge. Guys, rich people, rich people have pajama lounges, okay? It's just a space in jail, in a room. You walk upstairs, there's just a space where their kids can wear their pajamas and just hang around. That for me is just absolutely incredible, right? Um, but I think probably one of the things that really stuck out for me was the fact that this house had a walk-in fridge. For many of us, especially as creatives, we know the walk-in fridge we know is there by tops. You know, when you walk in into tops and you're trying to get your beds, you know, plus it's a Friday, you're trying to get your beds. That's the walk-in fridge that you kind of know, right? So I'm sold by this house, um, the real estate agent, the sweetest lady that you'll ever meet. And I must tell you, real estate agents are very old and sweet ladies. If they don't have old and sweet ladies, they employ, I don't know if you guys watch the Oppenheimers on Netflix. It's these hot ladies that anything they say goes. You become a yes ma'am to those ladies. Um, so the appeal for this woman was the fact that she was very sweet, she was very kind. She put in front of me what is now known to me as the offer to purchase, which is the OTP. So the offer to purchase basically says you have an intention of buying this house. Now, because I'm dragged up by euphoria, because I'm dragged up by this pajama lounge, I'm dragged up by the fact that this house is a walk-in fridge, I'm dragged up by the fact that this house has a laundry, I'm dragged up by the fact that this house has a swimming pool, I signed the offer to purchase. And basically what it said in the offer to purchase was I am in a good financial standing for me to be able to get a loan from one of the financial institutions said a bank. No problem. The next day I wake up, euphoria gone. You know how like motivational talks work, right? You know motivational talks, they'll motivate you, motivate you. That night you are pumped up and you are amped and you're like, yes, 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 I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And then you wake up the next day and you realize that, mm, I'm not really that pumped up, right? So it's the same thing that I wake up, I wake up with euphoria, um, regrets the next day. 
So I pick up the phone and I call my bank and I'm like, guys, I'm buying this house. Do you think I can actually get access to this amount of money? Now the house was 4 million rand. I needed 2,750,000 rand and I was going to put up the rest as a deposit. Okay, Shab Fede, the bank says to me, Miss Mashile, in all honesty, you cannot afford this house. So we would suggest that you walk away from this deal. I'm like, oh, that's cool, guys. You're my bank. You're telling me that I cannot afford this house. So let me walk away. So I call the real estate agents. I'm like, uh, Maria, so after careful consideration, I don't think I want this house anymore. Maria, so sweetly, so ever sweet and kind, Maria says to me, Nicolette, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. What now needs to happen is that you need to send me all your FICA information, your payslip, your proof of residence, your um, uh, 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 personal information, and we're going to use a bond originator who's going to apply to all the financial institutions, say banks, and only when they decline you can you get out of this deal. So now I start to panic. I'm like, oh my goodness. But you know what? At the back of my mind, I'm like, I, I'm chill. Because my own bank, who knows me, they know me well. My money goes into their bank. They said I can't get this loan. So I put in my information with the bond originator. The bond originator goes out to look for a loan for me. And sober-minded, three banks come back to say, no, this girl with this amount of money cannot afford this loan. Shut up. Guess who betrayed me? My own bank. These guys pushed out an approval. However, my approval was over 30 years, right? So the loan agreement was for the amount that I needed. However, the loan term was now over 30 years versus the 20 years that generally is given to consumers. That changed my agreement so much that if you actually looked at how much I was going to pay overall after I had finished paying this loan, the multiplier was three times. I was going to end up paying 8 million rand back to the bank. And I was like, nah, I don't need to be financially literate to know that this is a bad deal. So I tried to get out of the deal um, with other complications, only finding out that the bond originator had actually understated my finances. Um, the bank eventually decided to retract. However, the real estate agency said, because the suspensive clause in the offer to purchase, remember the offer to purchase I so casually signed? Because there was a clause in there that was fulfilled when there was a bank that was willing to give me a loan, it then meant that I was now legally bound to buy the house. So what happened was I ended up settling out of court. I settled with the real estate agency 125,000 rand later. So in other words, I gave a free 125,000 rand to a real estate agency simply because I, fell, I failed to plan. And that is why it is important to remember that if you plan to fail, you fail to plan, right? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's the right one. And I tell you this because I want to also tell you a little bit of a story that happened a couple of years ago when I worked in advertising. So we worked in advertising and we had a government client. And as part of our government client, one of the campaigns we were put on was an endorsement campaign on a, I don't want to give it away too much because if I tell you what the campaign was, you will kind of know which client it was. And I don't want to speak ill about my previous clients. You never know, you know, the industry is very small and bosses always remind you how small the industry is, right? Um, so anyway, we were on an endorsement campaign, we brought these influencers slash celebrities, and they were supposed to endorse this thing that we were doing with government, right? So they endorsed this thing, they endorsed this thing, we had meetings with them, everything is absolutely amazing. By the way, client wanted it to happen so quickly that a lot of us kind of, we took the plan, put it on the side, and just executed. Um, a very big mistake on our side as agency, right? So we didn't have contracts put in place. You know, it was really a lot of word of mouth. Everything was like, okay, Sharp, let's go ahead. Um, you know, when, when, when we're already asking for content from influencers without actually getting plans put into place and agreements. So these guys go out full on with their content. And a couple of years later, it came back to bite us. A couple of years later, one of our influencers went on national radio and said, actually, 
I never agreed with that thing, with that entire thing. I was paid to do this. Guys, it was the biggest backlash that I had ever worked on a campaign, that I've ever received on any campaign that I did. And that is when I realized the importance of actually putting together contingency plans for in case something happens. It is important that you remember that even if you are in the creative space, or even if in your own personal life, putting together a contingency plan for what it is that you were doing is of absolute importance. Why is it important? Because one, it gives you peace of mind to know that you have covered yourself. Now, I don't need to repeat it to anybody that works in the creative space to say how important it is for you that even when you have a telephonic conversation with a client, you got to follow it up with an email to say, remember the conversation we had as per our telephonic conversation. This is what you say, because that is actually part of you planning for any unforeseen circumstances that might come up in the future. Now, one of the things that can always come up in the future when it comes to your personal life is you failing to plan today for what is going to happen in the future. I always say when we talk about financial planning, we're talking about you taking a couple of numbers and putting, to, putting them together in a math sum. So you are taking 10,000 plus 100,000 plus 900,000 minus 50,000 divided by five years plus another, 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 another number, multiply by another number. And the answer that you are hoping to get is what your future is going to look like. So when you go on every single day and you make financial decision on your life, forgetting to plan on what you ideally want this number to look like, you are going to get any answer in the future. So the answer in the future now is no longer predictable. Which is why even when you look in the creative side, we have a brief, we then have a strategy meeting, we then have a strategist, then we have the creative team coming in to put together the look and feel of the campaign. Then we have the strategist coming back to say, okay, this looks like something that we're working with. Then you get your media buying team. So you've got a lot of stakeholders that are working together to put together this campaign plan because you already can predict what the response is going to be or what the actual result is. And that is why you go through all those steps when you are in the creative space. Now, the funny thing is a lot of us leave the response or the answer of our financial future to chance. We don't have the different stakeholders that are going to ensure that we can almost predict what is going to happen in our financial future. And, and, and let's be honest, let's have a fair and a frank conversation. A majority of us in the creative space are exactly like that. Are you not? Ask yourself right now. And I've got a checklist. Ask yourself, do you have a sustainable income? Can you tick check? Yes. Do you have medical aid or medical insurance? Can you tick yes? Do you have a retirement fund, whether in the form of a pension fund or whether in the form of passive income or whether in the form of a retirement annuity? And are you contributing enough so that you can get the income that you want when you no longer can work? Do you have life insurance? Is your life, the brain that you're using for all these crazy ideas, all these lurie worthy ideas, all these ideas that you want to go to the far end of the world, have you actually planned to protect and ensure that when the ideas no longer come, all those years of you putting together ideas will pay up at the end? Or are you hoping to say one day, hey, hey, we were so good. Remember that idea we did for this and this client. Remember that idea for this and this client, but you only got paid once for that idea. Do you have the disability cover that is going to cover you in case you find yourself on a way to a shoot and there's an incident that happens and you are left disabled. Let's say you, you lose your voice. Let's say you lose your arms. If you are a graphic designer, do you have the right disability cover to be able to assist you? Do you have an income protector? If something is to happen to you and you cannot work for a couple of, uh, of months, do you have a budget in place? 
Are you sure of what are your predictable costs that come every single month? Are you sure of them? Can you, can you sincerely say you have predictability when it comes to your finances? Do you have emergency funds? We saw COVID-19 hit. There was a lockdown. The economy went on a slowdown. You know, like when taxis go on a strike and they close the N1 and all of a sudden we all have to find our alternative routes. Do you have a plan? Do you have somewhere where you can tap into and actually be able to access amount of money? Do you have short-term insurance? You know, it's crazy. We talk about only um, just under 5 million South African motor um, owners actually have insurance which has third-party cover. When you are on the road and you are in a rush because client needs something from you and it's in the office and you get into your car and you are in a rush and you bump somebody, do you have third-party cover to be able to cover you? Do you have public liability if you bump into any of government's infrastructure? Do you have any insurance over your gadgets, your cell phone, your cameras? How many of us have these high-tech cameras, high-tech phones, high-tech um, um, gadgets that facilitate our jobs? However, we do not have insurance in place for them. Do you have a will in place? Because not one of us knows when our day is going to come. Do you have credit insurance over your debt? Is your debt insured so that if something is to happen to you, somebody else, the assurance company can step in and actually pay? Do you have a bond and does your bond have bond insurance? But does the property structure also have insurance? Do you have provision for black tax? Because that's one thing we cannot run away from. Family responsibility stays family responsibility. And if you are financially obligated at some level to actually support your family members do you have black tax account put in place and last but not least do you have that investment portfolio that can give you the financial security that you need and that's what we're here to talk about that's what we're here to look at we want to look at the various aspects that you can match up with your creative direction or creative journey when you are actually planning for a campaign that is going to come alive do you have the financial tools and resources in place that can match up when we say to you do you have a strategist who's your financial strategist have you sat down and actually thought about how do i ensure that this match sum gives me a predictable figure at the end when I am no longer able to work. And that's what we're here to talk about. That's what we want to ultimately say to you. It is important that the same vigor and the same effort that you put in when it comes to a campaign that you are executing on behalf of a client, put that same vigor, put that same enthusiasm, put that same excitement and put the same type of hours into planning for a financial future that is yours. That is yours. Now, I worked in an advertising agency, and for many of us who might uh, perhaps maybe work in the bigger companies, you might have uh, uh, um, uh, medical aid. You might have access to group life in the company. You might have access perhaps maybe to a retirement uh, um, um, fund that the, the business actually have. I was in a company that didn't have any of those. We were paid our salary. The, the way my salary came in, that is the salary I was being paid. And it was very important for me to sit down with my salary. And the thing is, as creatives, our minds are always um, working. We're constantly working. So we constantly are needing some sort of inspiration. And sometimes our inspiration can straddle there by the materialistic things that we can easily forget, the things that we need to make sure that we've put in place. So I'm asking you today to tell me whether or not you have fully planned your life, your financial future in a manner that when your income comes in, you know exactly what it is that your income needs to be apportioned, proportioned for. So let's talk a little bit about your financial goals. Now, one of the things that we always talk about is that your financial goals cannot be a standalone versus your life goals. What do I mean when I speak about your financial goals need to meet up with your life goals? The reality is that many of us have these financial goals. We want to drive a specific car. We want to live in a specific area. We want to have access to specific things and specific areas. So for instance, if you're saying, I'm going on an island holiday, 
You're not, you, 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 you are either talking a Maldives, you're either talking a, a Bora Bora, you're either talking a St. Bart's, you're either talking about the Seychelles or Zanzibar. We all have different access and the ex access that we have to different places is created by the financial planning that we do. So you can have access to a Maldives while somebody else has access to a Zanzibar. But at the same time, how you get to Maldives, how you get to the Zanzibar, again, is about access. What type of access do you have? But what type of access can you create for yourself? And that is why your financial goals need to be at the same level and parallel to your actual life goals. Because you can walk around and build a brand around your name as being the highest paid strategist in the country. However, does your financial goal have actual direct link to the actual life goal that you've got? So in, in case you want to maybe access a certain group of people, does your financial goal allow you to access this group of people? People will say it's not about money. Nothing is about money. Nothing. It's not about money. And I want to be very clear with you because remember, what you can access with your funds is a direct reflection of your aspirations and how far you have come. You will not work on a 20,000 rand brand campaign when last month you worked on a 500,000 rand brand campaign simply because there needs to be a, a, a access that shows that you have now moved from working on the 20,000 Rand brand campaign to now working on a 500,000 Rand brand campaign. So your life goals need to match your financial goals. And the only way you can do that is by making sure that one does not overtake the other. Because let me tell you, one of those is going to suffer. So let's say for instance, you feel that your life goal is to drive a German machine. However, financially, you are not doing the right things that allows you to access a German machine. Now you start getting frustrated. Now, because the life goal of driving a, a, a German machine overtakes the actual financial goal and the financial capability, that's when you start getting a balloon payment. That's when you start, when, when, the, when the bank a consultant says to you, um, Mr. Kumalo, you actually cannot afford this, but we can help you afford it. You start entertaining those type of conversations. Because now your life goal has overtaken your actual financial goal and your financial capabilities. So it is important for you to remember that. And remember that your goals ultimately are the, are the actual projects that are under these resources that you need to put into place that are part of the planning stages to give you the math sum that can give you a predictable result that it is that you are looking for. So let's talk a little bit about your planning journey. Now, you know, financial uh, finances, and I always say my company is called Financial Fitness Bunny. And, 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 and if you know me, you might know that I've written a book and it's called What's Your Move? And basically this is an intimate book that speaks about all the things that you can ultimately start making moves about today. But you will see it's also pink. You will see it's got a little girl who's wearing a tutu. Uh, a lot of my things are pink. And that's because what we figured is that we need to put some glitter on finances. We need to make finance something that is accessible to everybody, right? Um, we always talk about finances. And when you think about somebody that works in the financial industry, you think about somebody who's in a suit and a tie. You think about somebody who's holding a briefcase. You think about somebody that you sometimes often don't have a very relatable relationship with. And I see this a lot when people speak about banks or, you know, the general conversation when people speak about banks is the banks are out there to scam us. The banks are out there to get you. The banks are doing this. The banks are doing that. Or when they speak about financial institutions like Sunlum, they'll say, yo, those guys are the biggest scammers. They're trying to get us. They're trying to do that. But the reality is because we don't have a good relationship with the financial services sector. And simply because for many of us, historically, we didn't have a financial planning journey. So we never really met, the two minds have never really met, where you say, I want my retirement to look a certain manner. And the financial planning team saying to you, we can help you. So most of the time what has happened is that we have been very parallel with having this relationship. It's been you saying, maybe I want my financial 
my financial status to look like this. And then you going to the financial team and saying, guys, how do you guys help me? But you don't communicate to these guys as to what you want your financial retirement to look like, what you want your financial future to look like. So these guys work now as if they're on an island to try and give you what they think you want. Then when you don't get what you want from them, you come on social media and you say, ooh, financial brands in South Africa are so bad. They are scammers. They don't know what they're doing. No, it is because your goals did not speak to what you want your financial future to look like and where your financial future did not have the right resources and the right numbers to give you a formula that's going to give you the predictability of what you think your financial future is supposed to look like. So there is an importance that in your financial journey, you meet up with the right person. And I say this because there's often a number of times when there is a mismatch between the person who needs a financial journey mapped out and the person who is receiving the brief for the financial journey. I don't think there is a brand manager out there that could potentially give a brand campaign brief to somebody that they don't think can execute. So why, when it comes to your finances, do you want to give your financial future brief to a team of people that might not give you what it is, people that you don't trust, people that you don't like, people that you are afraid of. It is important for you to make sure that your financial journey is matched up with somebody that speaks your language, speaks your ideals, speaks your values, but also can become a friend. I always say to people, my financial advisors, my financial planners are people that I can go have a dope with, people I can have a drink with. Why? Because I need to be able to relate to a person on a certain level for me to be able to trust them with my hard earned money. I don't want to just be a number to a person that I'm supposed to be trusting my financial future with. So if you are my financial planner and you support Man United, it's not gonna work. Because if you can make such bad decisions when it comes to choosing your soccer team, I then cannot trust you with my money. And I'm sorry to the Man United fans. I know that Man United is the most successful English premiership team in the world. However, we have seen what history has pushed out in the last 10 years. And remember, you're as good as your last performance. So this is what you've got to understand. If you are in a room and you're meeting with your financial planner and your financial planner makes you feel uncomfortable, that is not the person you give your brief to. And it's important that you do give them a brief to make sure that the brief speaks to you. And it is their responsibility to say to you, this brief will work or not. This brief I can execute or not. So you need to already know and have an idea of what you want your financial plan to kind of look like. And we always talk about a financial plan being a blueprint to your finances. So if somebody walks into your life or has a conversation with you about what is your financial plan, you should be able to take out a blueprint, a map that shows where you are, where you can potentially go, or, and exactly where you are going. Very important for you to understand that. And I'm going to take a quick ad break and I want us to play a game. Now, I created this game called Save or Spend. And I just want to read you. So the same way you would play 30 seconds, let's say 30 seconds meets money. And I'm going to read you some of the terms here. I'm not going to read the terms, but I'm going to describe them. And I'm hoping that you guys, wherever you are, if you're in your teams, you can guess them out or you can actually share them on the comment section. So I'm gonna give it like five seconds. I know it's, like, it's not the traditional 30 seconds. They give you like maybe five seconds to guess what I am talking about. What is Africa? Which mineral is Africa rich for? Right, the next one. If you were to go to SAS and you are filing your company documents or your returns for the year, but the company has done no work. What are you? The name starts with the letter that comes after C. 
What is the company name or the new FSB? What is it called? And the last one is you have Powerball and you have, what is the other one? Also a name of a song by Mafiki Zolo. Now that you've done that and we've played that game, I want to now come back to really structuring your financial plan. What should your financial plan consist of? I think the first thing that you need to do is first and foremost, you need to be very honest with yourself. And I want, when I say honest, um, I'm not talking about you saying, I think I earned this amount of money or I think I, 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 I am here with my finances. I want you to do the checklist again. I want you to go through the checklist and I'm gonna read it again to you. Number one, do you have a sustainable income? Number two, do you have medical aid or medical insurance? Number three, do you have a retirement fund? Do you have a comprehensive life insurance? Do you have a budget? Do you have short-term insurance? Do you have bond insurance if you have a property? Do you have a will in place? Do you have credit life insurance for all your debts? Do you have property structural insurance? Do you have provision for black tax? And do you have an investment portfolio for your financial security? Now, when you're putting together your financial plan, these are some of the things that you've got to take into consideration. Now, this year, what happened was COVID-19 happened, the lockdown happened, and most of our incomes slowed down, especially for people that worked in the advertising space and creative space, entertainment space. Our incomes were either, we had to take a salary cut, or for some of us who were unlucky, where you work in a no job, no pay, our, basically our income came to a halt. Now, one of the things that put a lot of South Africans into debt, or put a lot of South Africans into a routine of debt is the fact that people do not have what is called an emergency fund. People do not have a plan for the day their income stops, is reduced or runs out. So what does an emergency account look like? Even the South African Reserve Bank has what is called reserves. They've got gold bars and those are their reserves. So your emergency account needs to be an account where you are putting money away every single month so that you are able to tap into it when you need it. And I, ex I, I, I sincerely express or focus a lot on the emergency account because it's one of the things that we as creatives need. But creatives also need additional income streams. Now, I'm not saying go out there and go find a second job. I know how time intensive working in the creative space is. What I am, however, saying is you need to find a way to buy or acquire passive income generating assets. And there are various ways in which you can do this. And it comes back to putting together this financial plan, but also understanding the space that you work in. When you understand the space that you work in, especially in the creative space, we know that predictability of income is not a guarantee. Sometimes you may lose an entire client and all of a sudden the account management role is no longer relevant because we don't have that client. The account director role is no longer relevant or client takes a part of the job that you may used to have been doing. Let's say for instance, design work and it's given to another company and you're only left with the below the line. Now, all of a sudden you as a designer don't have work. It is then important for you to remember that you as an individual are responsible for the financial planning of your financial future, which is why it is important for you to go and sit with a financial advisor or planner so that you can plan. The Nicolettes of this world, we can only do the function of trying to explain to you why financial planning is a very integral part of your life, especially when you work within the entertainment industry or the creative industry. Now, we did something really remarkable. We actually, with Sanlam, in partnership with Sanlam, did a campaign called the Money Meetups. And basically what we did with the Money Meetups is we challenged the status quo that financial advisors or people that work within the financial space are old, old white men, have no personalities, have no relation to you and your personality and what you like, and there are guys in suits and ties 
with briefcases and they don't even know what social media looks like. This is why it was important for us to do the money meetups. And we met a couple of amazing human beings that do amazing things. And it indicated to us that we are all different individuals with different profiles. And when you are a different individual with a different profile, you then need to be able to give your financial future brief to somebody that relates to you. And I'll give you an example. One of the first gentlemen that we met up was a gentleman by the name of Peter Philip. And he is an IT guru. Basically, this guy is a coding guru. He can program almost anything. He can program my, my brain if I allowed him. This man works throughout the night. Now he has a family, he had a family, his parents made a lot of money and then lost everything. So this gentleman has worked all his life as an employee and as an entrepreneur. And he's made so much money, but because he's got in the back of his mind, he relives this thing of his parents losing their money. He is afraid to actually plan for his future and put his money in the right spaces that can give him this predictable financial future that he wants. And we partnered him up with a gent who was like him. They both loved running. They both loved exercising. They both loved marathons. They both loved jogging. And they just both loved tech and, the, and, and, and everything about tech. We partnered him up with this man and they hit it off. In fact, the conversation about planning for money was no longer intimidating. It was no longer scary for him. It was no longer something that he was like, I'm not sure if I can open up to this person. Because what Sanlam has realized is that financial planning is about creating a relationship with somebody that has the expertise to be able to assist you. Somebody that gives you that feeling of comfort, that feeling of safety, but probably most importantly, that feeling of relatability. It must feel like you're having a conversation with your boo. It must feel like you're having your conversation with the guys after you guys have just smashed a campaign. That's what financial planning needs to feel like. But the most important thing is taking that first step. And if you do not know where to find the right person, money meetups is exactly where you need to be because you are the right type of candidate that Sanlam is looking for to be able to assist. And they can make the process very simple for you. And for me, I found it quite interesting how you all of a sudden build a relationship with somebody that you probably on any other day would have turned your nose up to because they are in a space that you are not familiar with. But you are also in a space they are not familiar with. Can you imagine giving an advertising brief to somebody that does finances or an advertising brief to somebody that does accounting? They probably would stare at you. And that is why we need to ensure that both minds meet at a place that can take up the predictability that you as a client are looking for. I'm hoping to see you guys on some of the Money Meetup website. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to be taking this bull of financial planning by the bonds and you're going to really push out. And unlike me, who tried to buy a house that I couldn't afford and couldn't even know, didn't even know what the offer to purchase meant. And essentially had to now divorce myself from 125,000 rand. I'm hoping that you can plan a little bit better. I'm hoping that this session has given you an idea of why financial planning is so important, just as it's important when it comes to you executing your creative briefs. If you are looking for me, you can find me anywhere. I'm on social media. I am on YouTube. It is the Financial Bunny. I have a book out. It's called What's Your Move? But most importantly, please do and uh, visit us on Money Meetups on Sunland. So www.moneymeetups.com. I think it's .co.za if I'm not mistaken. If not, just type in Money Meetups Sanlam and it's going to pop up there and you're going to find exactly what you need and the help that you are looking for. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm so sorry that we have come to the end of our session. I would love to be with you guys and have a little bit more conversation around, you know, how do you even have the conversation one-on-one -on -one with your financial planner? What are some of the questions that you need to be asking? But as I said, the Money Meetups team is ready to assist you. They're ready to jump on and give you the hand that you need because ultimately we all need somebody that can walk the journey with us. But if you like to gallop, 
let's get you somebody who also likes to gallop to be on this financial planning journey with you. Thank you very much. And,